Welcome to Classic Take, Season 2, it's Episode 13. We will discuss today, the title is Global Powers versus Mashiach. Will the USA, Russia, or China call the shots? We're talking about Mashiach entering the world stage when there's many players on the geopolitical system out there. And sometimes a little hard to understand how Mashiach will find his way and rise to the top of this whole system. So how will Mashiach deal with all the other superpowers out there? Will he negotiate with them? Will he negotiate with Hamas? Will he, will he find some political way of gaining influence in other countries? What if the other superpowers will have policies that clash with Mashiach's policies? Will there be some type of compromise Mashiach will have to do? So let us understand. I mean, this obviously touches upon core elements of what Mashiach is, who Mashiach is, what he stands for. But I would like to focus um, primarily through the lens of the Rambam. The Rambam in Hilchas Mulachim, Perik Yudal, Falach Yudal, right at the end of his book where he describes the signs of Mashiach, the Rambam says that the signs of Mashiach are that if Yamid Melech mi beis David, if a king will arise from the house of David, will be diligent in the study of Taira. The word Hoiga doesn't just mean that he will be diligent and learn Taira constantly, but also means that he'll delve deeply into the meaning of Taira and he'll involve himself in mitzvahs like David, his father. We know that David HaMelech, the first Jewish king, besides being a great warrior in battles and uh, somebody that uh, won many battles and was fearless in, in overcoming the enemies of the Jewish people. But David HaMelech, first and foremost, was a Taira scholar. He was in the Sanhedrin. He was actually, he was the chief of the Jewish high court, the chief of the Sanhedrin. And he would delve into Taira topics. He would give halachic rulings. Even when he was a king, he would learn and teach and be involved in Taira discussion. This was his primary uh, occupation, was learning Taira. And... Um, he had to deal with the country, obviously, but actually says that David HaMalach would, at one point, he stopped going out to war. He would stay at home. He would learn Taita and he would send his generals out to war. And in the merit of his learning Taita, the merit of David HaMalach learning Taita, so Yoyov, his general, would be successful at battle. And Rambam, so if we look at David HaMalach and particularly through the verses that describe David HaMalach's intense devotion to Hashem, his great joy at being able to fulfill the commandments of Hashem, his great diligence in, 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 in fulfilling the mitzvahs, as it's evident from the verses in Tehillim. So Mashiach will be a mirror reflection of David HaMalach. That's why the Rambam describes, Dov, uh, uh, that's why the Rambam describes Mashiach as somebody that is diligent and tight and involved in mitzvahs, like David his father. The term Kedavid David, like David his father, is a term that's found in scriptures, when we describe righteous kings who descended from King David, so if we want to highlight that they were righteous, that they kept the Torah mitzvahs, we use the term Kedavid Aviv, that they were righteous like David, his father. But as a whole, the term Kedavid Aviv, like David, his father, represents a very high measure of righteousness, of dedication to Torah mitzvahs. So the Ramam says that Mashiach will be diligent in Torah mitzvahs like David, his father, like the written Torah and the oral tradition, Mashiach is not going to negate or break the oral traditional respect all the laws of the Torah. He'll compel all the Jewish people to go on the ways of Torah and he'll fix any breach that is found in the observance of Torah. He'll wage the words of Hashem. So then it is a Becheska Shu Mashiach. Then we could presume that he is Mashiach. If he's successful, he was successful in all the above and in his wars and he was he overcame of all the nations around him, and he built a base Hamikdash, and he gathered the dispersed of Israel. Sareza Mashiach Bavadi, then he's definitely Mashiach. Then we know for a fact he's Mashiach. So the Rambam describes the Rambam in very few words. The Rambam doesn't give so many details of how Mashiach will arrive on the scene, what will happen before his arrival, if there'll be any great world events that will take place. The Rambam alludes to it very briefly in his next chapter, in chapter 12, the last chapter of his book, where the Rambam says that there are various descriptions amongst our, that our sages give for the different world events that will happen when Mashiach comes. And the, there's many prophecies about it. There's the war of Greg and Mogig, the arrival of Elio Anavi. But the Rambam says he's not getting into it because all these details are, there's different ways how Mashiach could come. There's no exact, nothing is engraved in stone. This is not 
There's no the Rambam says he doesn't want people to spend too much time delving into exact details of what, when, and how. It's irrelevant. The main thing is to believe in the coming of Mashiach and the essence of the matter, as he explained in chapter 11, where he describes what the role of Mashiach is. will be a king, will compel all the Jewish people to fulfill Teda Mitzvahs, and he will bring the completion of Teda Mitzvahs by building the bay, overcoming the nations around Israel, which means he'll establish true Jewish independence. The kingdom of, when we talk about the return of the kingdom of David HaMalach, we're not just talking about a descendant of King David, but as we've discussed in the past, we're talking about creating true Jewish independence. Only a descendant of David HaMalach has the power to create true Jewish independence, and he will build the base HaMikdash, and he will return all the Jewish people that were exiled, and thereby he will establish a full return of Teira Mitzvahs, because when there's Jewish independence, there's, no, there's nobody, nobody stopping the Jewish people from being able to learn Teira and do Mitzvahs in peace, and we have a Beis HaMikdash to bring the sacrifices, and we have all the Jewish people in the land of Israel, which is the main place where we fulfill the Mitzvahs, and a number of Mitzvahs like Yovel and Shemitah, the Jubilee year, and the sabbatical year depend on all the Jewish people being in the land of Israel, so then, by Mashiach doing all the above, he will have returned the full-fledged performance of mitzvahs in the greatest way. So therefore, we know he is Mashiach. So when we think about it, how will Mashiach accomplishes, accomplish this? The first thing that the Rambam says, the first thing Mashiach does before anything, is he's hoigib b'tayda v'esik b'mitzvahs. He learns tayda diligently and involves himself in mitzvahs like David his father. So that's, in a certain sense, the Rambam is describing the secret to his success. The first thing that he does, the thing that gives him the ability to do everything else. We know that in the Rambam, the order of his words are exact. He's describing a, a, a process that starts with the first words, that he's Mashiach, even before he does anything, he learns Torah diligently and in depth, and he's involved in mitzvahs, and then he goes on to compel all the Jewish people also to fulfill Torah mitzvahs, and then he wages war with the nations around the Jewish people. So it all starts from Hoyge B'Tayra V'Isik B'Mitzvahs. He learns Tayra diligently, and that leads him to do mitzvahs, and that leads him to compel the Jewish people to do mitzvahs. What is this diligence, Hoyge B'Tayra? How does that give him the success of being able to be to become Mashiach? So the Rebbe explains, the Rebbe brings a parallel that we find that when Yaakov Avinu, when the, our patriarch Yaakov came to Egypt, when Yosef, his son, was the Mishnah the Malachi, was the second in command, and Yaakov is coming down to Egypt with the small family that he has, which will later become the Jewish nation. They numbered only 70 souls at that time. So before Yaakov Avinu comes, he has Yehuda come. That's Yehuda Sholach Lefanov. He sends Yehuda before him to establish a house of Torah study in the land of Goshen, in the land of Goshen, where the Jewish people were going to settle. And Rashi explains that what was the point. He brings some of our sages to explain to establish a house of Torah study where the Jewish people will be hoigim b'tayda, very similar to the Rambam's terminology. They'll learn Torah diligently. Now, a person could say we understand the importance of establishing Torah study, of establishing a house of Torah study, but why was it the prerequisite that before Yaakov Avinu even steps foot in the land of Egypt, he has to first make sure that there's a study hall already established? Why does he have to send Yehuda before him? And the message is that in order to be able to enter exile and not to be influenced by exile, it's not enough they have political power. Yaakov, after all, his son, Yosef, was a second in command over Egypt. And in those days, Egypt was a superpower. So Yosef really was commander of the whole world. But Yaakov Avinu knew that eventually the Jewish people will end up in exile. So the, the, the stay in Egypt is not going to be a very rosy and nice experience, they're going to go into exile. And he has to first lay the foundation for the Jewish people to give them the ability not to be affected by exile, to remain inwardly free. How is that? There's only one recipe. The recipe is through learning Torah and learning Torah diligently, where a person's mind becomes occupied in Torah. And thereby, as our sages tell us, that only somebody that involves himself doesn't just say somebody that learns Torah, somebody that involves himself, involves his mind, his heart, he really engages in Torah study, such a person that his mind and his way of thinking is completely directed and permeated with Torah, such a person is truly free, because such a person is not affected by what this person says, what the other person says, or what his neighbors say, what his family says, or even with what the world powers say. He's just concerned with what Hashem says, and he's by being completely connected to Hashem through learning Torah, which Torah preceded the world, as our sages tell us. 
that the Torah preceded creation. The world was created for Torah, not that the Torah came for the world. That after the world was created, the Torah was given in order to teach us how to conduct the world. But in essence, Torah preceded the world. The world is there. The, the Torah was the blueprint of creation of the world. So the world is really there in order to bring about into fruition the objectives and goals of Torah. So through Mashiach being diligent in Torah study, he'll be able to not be affected by exile. Not only won't be affected by exile, but he will compel all the Jewish people to follow his example, to learn Torah, to, to do mitzvahs. And not only that, but he will, be, he will go out to war. He will be so indoctrinated, he'll be so permeated with the vision of the Torah, of bringing God's message to the world, that he'll literally won't be scared of anybody. He'll go and fight the world in order to make sure that the world will accept the message of Hashem, the message of Torah. So in essence, Mashiach starts, like any good, dedicated Jew, he's learning Torah and Mitzvahs. The novelty of Mashiach will be that he'll be so dedicated to Hashem that he'll, he, with that power, that dedication of Torah and Mitzvahs, will be contagious. He'll be able to take that and force, compel others to follow his suit. Sometimes it's very hard to convince other people that they should also become religious. They should also be able to do Torah and Mitzvahs. But because Mashiach will be completely one with Torah and Mitzvahs, will be diligent, and is involve his heart, and ma- his mind, and soul in, in, the, in, in, the, in, in learning Torah and doing mitzvahs, and it will be connected to Hashem the greatest way possible, he will, it will have a ripple effect through that. He won't suffice with just being you know, perfect in the observance of Torah and mitzvahs in his own life, but he will compel others. Not only he will compel others, it will propel him further to, 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 to start a, a world uh, you know, a uh, change of the world order to, to affect the whole world. They should also follow the word of Hashem. And it all emanates, it all starts with Mashiach's complete dedication to Hashem and only Hashem, only the word of God, only what Torah says. And that will be the secret of, of his success. So when the world will try to challenge Mashiach and as there's different descriptions and different sources of the world will challenge Mashiach or they won't challenge Mashiach, it depends. The world will be completely refined or not which is a little bit of a separate discussion, but if the world would try to challenge Mashiach, Mashiach won't be phased. We find, for example, the first Jew, Avram Avinu, so it says he was called Avram HaIvri. We know that the original name for the Jewish people was Ivri, Hebrew, not Jews. Why was he called Ivri? Because it says that the whole world was on one side, he was on the other side. The whole world didn't believe in, they believed in idol worship, whatever it was. And Avram Avinu was the only one at that time who was unfazed. He had a few other people you had some righteous people, you had shame, Ava, you had some people that stayed in their own tent and they, if somebody wanted to come to them, they would teach them about Hashem. But they didn't try to challenge the world. Avram Avinu was the first one that went and spread the word. And the whole world was laughing at him. They were against him. They say, this guy is a heretic. This guy is a fanatic. But eventually he was the one that brought, the, that brought about the birth of the Jewish people, which brought the Torah and the light of godliness of truth to the world at large. So this will be the, uh, the success of Mashiach. Mashiach will be, be his dedication to the word of Hashem, which will give him the ability, first of all, to become who he is, and his ability to affect everybody else in the, amongst the Jewish people, and furthermore, to affect the world at large. And because Mashiach will be totally dedicated to Hashem, there won't be an ounce of his own ego, of his own agenda, of his own political aspirations or goals involved. It'll be completely just to fulfill the word of Hashem, therefore he'll be promised success, therefore he will be successful in his campaigns, will be successful in his wars, and he will bring about the kingdom of Hashem to be established on this earth. The, um, the way how Mashiach will go about this is also underlined in the words of the Rambam. The Rambam says, that Mashiach Yaakov Kol Yisrael, Mashiach will compel the Jewish people. The Rambam doesn't say Mashiach will convince, he will teach, he says he will compel. The term compelling could be, you could compel a person in many different ways. You could compel him with words, you could compel him by force, you could compel him by putting a gun to his head, you could, you could compel him by the sheer force of your personality. But when we use the term compel, it also highlights first and foremost that whoever is trying to compel the other person is not taking, not ready for any compromise. And the democratic system we have today, so all goals, all uh, values, our whole value system is depends on votes. You know, is, are you allowed to do this or do that? It depends on whatever political system is put into power at the time and what their agendas and political goals are. And that decides what value system, what morals and ethics the world, that country should do. 
However, Mashiach, Yaakov Kol Yisro, he's not going to try to be diplomatic. He's not going to try to put his gloves on and try to compromise the truth. Well, well, the only thing that will be on his mind, he'll have complete dedication to Hashem. He's going to act like a king. What is a king? Ram, the first thing that Ramam describes is Yamid Melech, a king, a true king. Our sages say, Masech Tehiri Yisaf Yud Aleph, that a Melech means She'en al Gabov El Hashem al A true king means that the only one that's on top of him, the only one he's afraid of, the only one he has, so to say, is responsible to answer to is Hashem, is God Himself. Somebody that has to be afraid what Washington says or what, what this, the UN says, whatever it is, is not a true king. That's, uh, that's might be a political leader, might be a good polit- politician, a statesman, but it's not a king. The, 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 the real essence of a king is somebody who is fearless, somebody that is connected with Hashem. And it's impossible to have this quality of kingdom unless it comes from Hashem. The Rebbe says, interesting thing, the terminology our sages use, is al gabov ela Hashem alikav. A true king, our sages say, is someone that he doesn't have anyone on top of him, besides Hashem his God. Now, if we think about it, it sounds a little bit contradictory, self-contradictory. From one hand, we're trying to highlight that this person is reign supreme. There's nobody on top of him. At the same time, in the next same breath, we right away emphasize there's no one on top of him besides Hashem. So that seems to minimize his, 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 his strength. It seems to minimize his position. And the Rebbe says, no, it's not true at all. Somebody that is, there's no one on top of him because he just could do what he wants, that's not truly a king. This person is, you know, he, he, he might have power, but ultimately what is, her, what is his decisions going to be based on? He, he wants to find favor in people's eyes or whatever other agendas he might have. The only true kingdom, the true strength, the true conviction the true fearlessness only comes because Mashiach will be completely nullified to Hashem. Yes, you'll only have Hashem on him. But when you're completely nullified to Hashem, then the only thing that, that matters to Mashiach is what Hashem says. It doesn't make a difference what China says, what Russia says, what the USA says, what the UN says. He'll only be responsible to Hashem himself. And with that power, he will be fearless. And with that power, he'll be successful, he'll be able to overcome everybody else. And they'll realize this truth because they realize that he's not coming from a personal driven agenda, but he's the only one that he's that he's connected to, the only one that's really giving him his power is Hashem. And this also helps explain the Rambam, as I mentioned before, he describes very clearly, he articulates with very exact detail how the redemption will unfold without getting into world events, which the Rambam shuns, he doesn't want to speak about that. But when talking about Mashiach's effect on the Jewish people, he gives a very detailed description exactly step by step how it will happen. Now, if we look at it, the Rambam explains that a king will arise from the house of David, will be diligent in Torah, involved in mitzvahs like David his father, and he will compel all the Jewish people and to, to fulfill Torah mitzvahs, he'll wage the wars of Hashem, and then he'll be successful, if he's successful and, he, and, and he's victorious over all the nations around him, and he builds the base of Middash in his place, and he gathers the dispersed of Israel, so then he's definitely Mashiach. If you look closely, the Rambam describes the ga- in gathering of the exiles at the last, the last thing that Mashiach does. Now, most people, they think, they, they, they're under the assumption that it's really the other way around. The first thing that redemption starts off with, and after all, when we use the term exile, exile usually means the most literal sense of the term that we're exiled from the land of Israel. So in most people's minds, they associate that the beginning of the redemption unfolds how? By Jewish people returning to the land of Israel. The Rebbe emphasizes, according to the Rambam, that's not true. According to the Rambam, the, the return of the exiles takes place after Mashiach accomplishes bringing back the Jewish people to keep Taira Mitzvahs. He, builds a, he brings true victory and, 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 and Jewish independence, true Jewish independence in the land of Israel. And he builds the base of Mitzvah, and only then does he bring back the exiles. And if you think about it, we see clearly in, in how things, uh, you know, in, 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 uh, in current events, and the way things have unfolded in the last period of time, there, it's impossible to have true independence without a true independent king. Independence is not just a technicality that pe- Jewish people have their own country and they could, and they could elect their own leaders, because ultimately they're still completely dependent on what the UN says, on what uh, Washington says, and what other people say. The only way we have true independence inwardly, not just technically we person could live in the stretch of land and land of Israel, but to have true independence, which means that a person is fearless, a person is only responsible to the truth and doesn't care about any, what anyone says, is only the only recipe for that is Mashiach, somebody that is 
dedication, his value system is based on one thing, and what the Torah says, what Hashem says, that's the only thing he's responsible for. It doesn't make a difference to him what the whole world says, because he knows what Torah says, what Hashem says. Such a person is, has inwardly independent, inwardly he's free, inwardly he doesn't care what the world says. Only such a person is able to create a true Jewish independence. Not only in the technical sense, that only such a person will be fearless in battle, and such a person won't, uh, won't, won't rest until he'll establish true Jewish independence. But most importantly, he will give the Jewish people the message of what true independence means. True independence means by being connected to Hashem. So when we're talking about establishing the redemption, it starts not with the people returning to the land of Israel. It starts with Mashiach. Mashiach has to come first, because if the Jewish people just come to the land of Israel, there might be, without getting into the whole discussion of exactly what the return of the exiles are, but it might be the current return of many people to the land of Israel, maybe is a foretaste, some type of, you know, beginning in a, in a, not in a literal sense, but some type of preparation for, 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 for the coming of Mashiach. But as we see today, it's not real gathering of it, the, the, the prophecy. When we look at the prophets, how they describe the return of the Jewish people, the land of Israel, it's not a technicality that anybody will be able to board a plane and buy a piece of land in the land of Israel. We're talking about the returning to a certain state. It's not just returning to a certain piece of land, it's returning to a certain physical and spiritual state where they're connected with Hashem, they're being reestablished in the land of Israel in a way that they're not being persecuted by their neighbors, that they have it, they're not going to be uprooted from there ever again. The return of exiles has a certain context. It's not just a geographic move. And in order for that return of exiles to be eternal, to be real, to be authentic, to really be part of the vision of redemption, it has to come about through Mashiach. Because it all depends on having being truly independent physically, which is comes about through being truly independent spiritually, which is only brought about through the leadership of Mashiach. So the Rambam describes the return of exiles. In other words, the Rambam is saying, of course, there'll be many people when Mashiach arrives at the scene. Of course, there'll be many people in the land of Israel. I mean, the Rambam is discussing Mashiach waging wars and being, and being victorious over the nations around them. That already implies that there's a lot of people living in the land of Israel. But that's still not the, it's not, it's still not the fulfillment of the biblical prophecy, the biblical and the uh, prophecy and the prophecies of all the prophets that, that came afterwards, uh, after Moshe, after the Chumash, regarding the return of exiles. Because those prophecies depend only after Mashiach does everything else. When Mashiach has created a true Jewish independence, that is where the Kibbutz Gal is. That is, when that, that is when you really have the return of exiles, that they're returning to a truly independent land of Israel, which is truly connected with the Jewish spirit and which will last as an eternal redemption. Now, what do we, what's the takeaway we take of this in our own life? The takeaway we take from our own lives that each one has a spark of Mashiach within him. And the spark of Mashiach within him, it gives him the ability not to be affected or influenced by what everybody says. The whole world could be against a person. The whole world could tell him, could laugh at him for being more dedicated to Hashem than they think he should be. And the spark of Mashiach in a person is that power, that ability that he has, that he's going to stand up for. He's not going to be affected by what anyone else says. He's going to connect himself to Hashem, which becomes expressed through learning Torah, through doing mitzvahs, compelling other Jews, making a, a ripple effect, making let, let his dedication to Hashem become contagious, affect other people as well. And in such a way, and standing up for what's right, even if other people are uh, trying to fight it. In such a way, he's revealing the spark of Mashiach within him, and that paves the way for the big Mashiach, for the for, for, the, for, the, for the Mashiach, not just the spark of Mashiach within a person to come and establish true Jewish independence and to establish a true connection to Hashem that will permeate the whole world and it will be everlasting redemption. It happens speedily nowadays. Amen.